Hello everybody, this is Jeff Janess. Welcome to lab exercise number 9 on raster analysis. Here we're going to see how to calculate the NDVI, or the Normalized Difference Vegetation Index, and the NDWI, or the Normalized Difference Water Index, from a Landsat raster image. Now both of these metrics produce a new raster with all values that lie between negative 1 and 1. Now, NDVI is calculated from a very simple formula. It uses only the red and the near-infrared bands in multiband imagery. NDVI values near 1 indicate higher concentrations of chlorophyll and therefore provide an estimate of vegetation density and health. Comparing NDVI over time can show how landscape is either recovering or deteriorating. Now, both NDVI and NDWI are used a lot in ecological research and landscape management, and they're both written about quite often in the literature. And if you'd like, here are a couple of NDVI references that can get you started if you want to dig more into them. Also, NDVI is a very common vegetation index, and it's really easy to calculate, which is why we're using it in this lab. However, there are other indexes available. For example, the EVI, or the Enhanced Vegetation Index, uses the red, the near-infrared, and the blue bands. It's supposed to work better in areas with high biomass. And here's a link to a manuscript that describes EVI. Okay, now turn into the Normalized Difference Water Index. The equation is very similar to NDVI, except that it uses the green band instead of the red band, and the near-infrared is subtracted from the green band in the numerator. And NDWI values near 1 indicate open water, and are a good way to locate water sources from images. And here's a reference to a good resource to learn more about that. Now, there's also a minor variation on NDWI that uses the short wave infrared and the near infrared bands and helps bring out water content and vegetation. And Gao 1996 describes this method. Now, both of these indices are intended to be used on multispectral imagery that include bands showing reflectance in the red, green, and infrared ranges. And we'll be trying them on an old Landsat enhanced thematic mapper image from the Grand Canyon from 2012. But the steps work equally well for any multispectral images. You just need to know which bands of the image come from the appropriate spectral ranges. Now, the Landsat Enhanced Thematic Mapper Images had eight bands, with the green, the red, and the near-infrared reflectances, and bands 2, 3, and 4. Newer Landsat satellites have more bands, and there are lots of satellite imagery sources out there these days that have many more bands than this. And also, this is just a very simple introduction to what you can do with remote sensing. There's a lot of research going on into building complex statistical models, analyzing potentially hundreds or thousands of spectral bands, looking for some combination of reflectance characteristics that identify very subtle phenomena on the landscape. I remember going to a remote sensing conference one time and hearing some imagery providers bragging how they could distinguish between coffee and Coca-Cola with their hyperspectral imagery. So we're not doing anything like that. We're doing something a little more practical, but let's get started. Now, first off, we're going to be using ArcGIS Pro version 3.3.2 in this example. So if you're using a different version of the software, things might look a little different. And we're also going to be using some functions from the Spatial Analyst extension. So let's just go quickly confirm that's turned on. Just run up to the project, come down to Licensing. Scroll down on the list here to see Spatial Analyst, and if it says yes, it's licensed, then you're good to go. Otherwise, you're going to have to configure your licensing options to turn it on. All right, next up, we're going to have to add a new map. So I'm just going to hit Insert, New Map. And I'm going to name this map NDVI and NDWI, just so I keep things straight. And as we're going through this, I just want to point out that uh, I do have a geodatabase online that you can download. It's at this link. And this link is in the lab exercise document. So if you want, you can download it and click on it here to download the geodatabase. Anyway, the geodatabase has a toolbox in it that has tools that do several things we do in this module. And so I have tools in there that do NDVI and NDWI if you would just like to play with those directly or see how they're set up. Moving on, we made sure Spatial Analyst is turned on, so now we have to add bands 2, 3, and 4 from our Landsat image. The Landsat image is in our Class Data folder in the Additional Data, and it's this Landsat GC, Landsat underscore Grand Canyon, basically. Now, you may have loaded raster data sets before. You know, you just right-click on it, and you go to Add to the map that you want to do, and, and that's fine. We'll, we'll see it's in here. Here's Landsat. But 
you can actually double click on this raster data set and if you go into it you, you'll see all the individual bands and here we can load individual bands by themselves so I'm going to load bands 2, 3, and 4 2 is the green band, band 3 is the red band, band 4 is the near infrared so I'm going to add those to my map and there we go this is what the landscape looks like in the near infrared this is how it reflects in the red range and this is how it reflects in the green range now there is an important thing to point out here that does affect how this tool runs. These, land, these bands here are what we call integer format. The, they hold numbers that range from 10 to 171 as you see here. They're actually the full range is from 0 to 255. But they're stored as integers. There's no decimal points in there. And they do this because that makes it a smaller file size. Uh, unfortunately we're going to need to convert this to floating point later and I'll show you how to do that. If you remember the NDVI and the NDWI produce a raster that ranges from negative 1 to 1. If we didn't convert this to floating point, uh, numbers that can have decimal places, then the tool would produce an integer raster as the output. And it could only have three values and it could be of a negative 1, it could have a 0, or a 1. And that's just not really good enough to pull out the, the information we're trying to get from the landscape. So we want it in decimal format. So we'll have to do that in the tool. I'll show you that. Okay, we're going to use the raster calculator for this. It's a tool that lets you set up a whole equation with a bunch of rasters. So we're going to go to Tools, search for Raster Calculator. There it is. We're going to use the Spatial Analyst version. Okay, here we go. Now, the first one, NDVI, if you recall, it is the near-infrared band minus the red band divided by the near-infrared plus the red band. So a couple of mathematical operations. Now, it would be nice if we could just do the near-infrared for minus the red band, band 3. Put that in parentheses. Divided by open parentheses, band 4, plus band 3. That would be nice, but like I said, these are integer rasters, so if I do run it like this, I'll get an integer output, and that just won't do me any good. So I'm going to convert it to floating point right here in the operation. And that's actually a command called float. And there is such a command here in the list of tools if you're interested in. So it's right here. So it is a real, real uh, operation. So I'm going to put by float here in the numerator that will convert this to a floating point before it divides it by the denominator. And I want to put the denominator as a floating point as well. All right. So that's good to go. Now I'm just going to call it in DVI. All right, it's all set up and ready to go. So we just hit run. It'll go to work. Now, for some reason, it doesn't seem to have added it to my map. Hopefully, it added it to yours. So I'm just going to have to go add it manually. I put it in the database where I've been putting all the data from these lab exercises. So here it is. It did make it. Add this to the map, come back up, and there we go. Now we have our NDVI. Now you notice it goes from negative 0.7, the, the lowest possible value is negative 1, the highest possible value is 1. So it's going from negative 0.7 to 0 0.19. And you can tell that the vegetated areas from the Grand Canyon image are in the lighter colors. This is where the chlorophyll is. The canyon walls are much more sparsely vegetated and they have much lower NDVI values. Just to switch it back to the Landsat image. And actually, we should change this Landsat image. I mean, it, it, these are the wrong bands. Let me just switch this real quick to the right ones. Okay, there we go. This is how the landscape would look from an airplane. Snow up on the north rim here. Anyway, all right, so you can see the vegetation is down here. Not so much vegetation in here. When we turn on the NDVI, sure enough, it really shines out. All right, now let's do the normalized difference water index. It's real similar to the NDVI. 
Let's delete all of this. I have the equation in the document here. It's down here. It actually extends over two pages. Anyway, it is taking the green band and subtracting the infrared in the numerator. So it's green band 2 minus the near infrared band 4. Put all of that in parentheses. And then make it a floating point. All right. Now we divide this by floating point in parentheses band 2 plus band 4 close parentheses we're going to call this NDWI all right that's all there is to that just hit run ah it added it to the map this time that's nice <laughs> Okay, and here we go. This is the NDWI. It also ranges from possible negative 1 to a maximum of 1. If you notice in here, the Colorado River is the brightest spot on the map. And these are the values that are up the highest nearest the maximum of 1. Now it's interesting, uh, NDWI also kind of rates the shadowed areas fairly highly. So this white area here is not a lake or a pond, it's just a shadowed area in the original Landsat image. So you can see this in the original image. Turn NDWI back on. So just a, just a fluke in the, in the way the landscape reflects. This sort of resembles water in a shadow. But the water definitely jumps out. All right, and that's that's it. Uh, like I said, we have a geodatabase with the tool that'll do this for you. You want to download it. And thanks so much for taking part. Now in our next lab exercise, we're going to start getting into the Swiss method ways to make hillshades look better. So that's kind of fun. I, I, I hope you'll enjoy that. All right, y'all take care. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.